Over on the north side, meanwhile, there's plenty of cash, alcohol, and valuables. The ATMs have been replenished with 20s, yeah. 50s, and $100 bills. And John Cordisco. Hey, Bob. Is, hey, what's going on? Well, I thought uh, you were valuable. I'm the most valuable asset left downtown. Well, it's supply and demand, whatever that rule is. Yeah, since March, everything's been cleared out. No cash, no alcohol, no valuables. The ATMs are depleted. It's well, I'll, I'll tell you, it's, hell a, it's a it's a sad it's a sad shell of its former self. I'll tell you, hell, a lot has happened since the last time you and I were on the air. Holy crow! <laughs> yeah, what's going on? Oh, uh, did gosh. you hear about Claudia Tenney? I, She's ahead. I, I talked to her a couple of times. Yeah, Claudia Tenney now is ahead in the razor sharp. Yeah, I, is I, it razor sharp uh, or is it? Ra- well, I don't know what they call it. It's it's a close race. The lead is is going back and forth, back and forth. When you get when you get a lot of students voting out of New York for this district, yeah, you get to do that. There's a bunch that came in with Queens posts with posters marks on it. So you know. And now dead people. Did oh, you hear dead people? Well, no, the, no, they can. The New York Daily Post. No, I didn't dead st- people are voting. I know what I'm saying under New York state law, they're using the address where they go to school, even though they're physically in New York, that's legal. They're going to school there and they go to school there at least one day a week. I forgot how the rule is. It's complicated, but they had a whole bunch of absentees come in with Queens postmarks on them. So, you know, when you have a 28,000 vote lead and it goes down to almost 200, it makes things to make you go, Hmm. I think that's. I, I hope it goes to the Supreme Court. I hope ultimately this case is settled by the Supreme. I, I I'll tell you, there's there's one silver lining in this whole thing. I mean, this is beautifully done by the Democrats nationwide. I got to give it to them. It was brilliant what they did. They'll never get caught. But the thing of it is, though, they are doomed. They are doomed. Abs- I mean, at, at the I national- know. I f- I feel badly for them at the national level. I mean, just look at some of the numbers. Well, they've lost 11 House seats so far, and I think 27 swing congressional districts all went R. I mean, you can just see, that's, that's the weird part. How can Republicans do so well, pick up legislatures, pick up all those House seats? Half the Democrat margin is gone now. Not one incumbent Republican, to my knowledge, has lost a congressional seat. How is that all possible and the guy at the top of the ticket loses? It's a statistical anomaly. It, it's, it's like everybody says, well, you know, John, it could be true. Biden could have got all those votes in the middle of the night and all those envelopes came in unsolicited, I might add. It could have happened statistically. Yeah, it could have happened. Well, it's like flipping a coin 10 times in a row. Yeah, okay, it could have happened. You know what the odds are of flipping a coin 10 times in a row? I looked it up. <laughs> 1,024 to 1. So, yeah, technically it could have happened, but it's, they're doomed. They're doomed. They, they, oh, how, they, how are they doomed, though? I mean, Chuck Schumer, every time I see a picture of Chuck Schumer, he's got that Schumer-eating grin. Well, no, what's he going to say? Okay, guys, we're doomed? <laughs> of course he's not going to say anything. What's Nancy? He's happy. Yeah, he's, he's happy. happy. I, I've never seen, I've, I am a student of Chuck Schumer, and over the decades, I've never seen the guy happier. Well, that's the, that's the beauty part. and in, in, in a sense, that's the beauty part because these idiots just think they won. And they, they have it. They're going to get killed. It's going to be a bloodbath. I remember years ago with the contract for America, when Newt Gingrich wiped out the Democrats. It's going to be twice that. It's going to be a disaster. I mean, you know, I like Joe Biden as a guy. I mean, when I was a Democrat, he was okay. I mean, he's, you know, he always reminded me of the, uh, remember the old show Green Acres? He reminded me of the cooperative extension guy on there. That's that's why you should think about with Joe Biden. It's like Gilligan's Island. Oh. He reminds he reminds me of the skipper. Who, Joe? Yeah, on Gilligan's Island. Except yeah. the the difference between the skipper and Joe Biden is the skipper always was wearing his hat. Yeah, it just I I've been doing a lot of research the last week, and I'll tell you, there's some really really screwy things going on. And, you know, you talk about facts and this and that. The facts are just piling up. It's just, you know, there's a difference between knowing and proving. Ask O.J. Simpson. <laughs> you know, there is a world of difference. But uh, I'll tell you. I think it's exciting. I, myself, I, I find this exciting. I, I hope it's not settled until a minute before the inauguration. I hope they, they have to have two 
two setups for the inauguration, one one for the incumbent and one for the other guy. I just I just find it so statistically, I mean, you look at some of the details and it's just impossible. It really is. It's impossible. And that's just the way it is and we'll see what the courts do. I don't oh, think I don't think frames. I mean, now that now that he stacked the courts, I mean, it seems pretty clear. No, 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 uh, no, 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 no. First rule. of all, first of all, Amy Coney Amy yeah. Coney Barrett will no, rule in his favor. Stacking the court is not appointing justices to vacant seats. He, he stacked the court with conservatives. No, that is now not. The court that is, is not conservative. That is not what stacking the court means. Stacking the court means adding extra seats and putting your people in it. That's stacking the court, not appointing people to fill an empty seat. That's not the same. No more the same than an absentee ballot and sending out an unsolicited ballot by, by mail aren't the same. They're not the same. Okay, then he's got the, the court is, is leaning six to three or seven to two. It's all conservative. You no, know, it's five and a half, four and a half, really, but. I don't know. It seems like it's seven to two or eight to one. No, conservative. It's, it's technically on paper, it's six Who three. Is, do but, they even have uh, a liberal left on the court? I'll take a liberal over the aggressive nut bars that are out there now. The old school liberals I can live with. At least you can reason with them. I mean, the old, uh, you know, the old school First Amendment liberals. I can live with them. They're they're wonderful. You know any First Amendment progressives? Can't think of any offhand. Yeah, Keith Uberman, but he keeps getting fired every time they hire Keith Uberman. He does something and he gets himself fired. I've never seen a progressive or a liberal with such a bad job record. You know, one, one day he's working for Fox, then ESPN, then CNN, and MSNBC. The guy well, always is getting fired, but... Yeah, he's, he likes to shoot himself in the foot. <laughs> I'll give him that. But, oh, no. And you know, myself, I, I prefer to stick around. I prefer to find a, a, a place where I'm a good fit and then do everything in my power, just do my job uh, well and not get fired. That's the other thing. These guys are doomed. CNN, MSNBC, and all of them. Oh my God! It, it's when Trump, if he's gone, there's about a ninety-five percent chance he'll be gone. If he's gone, they're doomed. Absolutely doomed. I know. Um, I think it's AT and T's putting CNN up for sale because they're hurting They've for cash. They've been up for sale. They've been up for sale for a long time, but nobody wants to buy them. Who's going to buy a failing, floundering cable news outlet? Well, no, they say they're doing so well. You know, it's getting so bad. They're digging up stories that I saw online from the Daily News of all places. Uh, a story about when Ivanka Trump was a teenager, how she was sitting at a party and flatulated. Hey, don't and flatulated don't and even talk the, about Ivanka Trump. No, you're I'm going to say what. No, I meant she's, she flatulated and blamed it on somebody online. else. I don't want to hear that on this station. Well, no, I mean, that's how desperate no, they are for, for don't stories. Don't even go there. No, no, no. I think I know what you were going to say. That wasn't bad. That just shows how desperate they are. We're starting a week off on on a bad foot because people are saying, Ah. and they said a bad thing about Andrew Cuomo. You were about to say something about Ivanka Trump. No, 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 no. You didn't let me finish. Don't go there. I didn't say anything bad about her. You were about to. No, he wasn't. No. You You were about to say something that you saw on the internet about Ivanka Trump. No, it's a story when she was a teenage kid. I don't. Don't she didn't do there. anything. She didn't do don't anything want to hear wrong. About anything Ivanka Trump did when she was a teenager. I happen I to like. Imagine. I happen to like Ivanka Trump, so I wouldn't say anything hey, disparaging. You both of all the Trumps, there are two Trumps I really like. Oh, Baron she's, Trump. She's sharp as hell. And Ivanka Trump. Those she's, are my favorite. Trumps. Oh no, the no, others, no, I was not going to say anything discouraging well, about great, her. Well, they're great, but the ones I really like, I Baron wanna, Trump. Point I'm trying seems, to make is that they're going to be. Seems to have his head on straight, and then Ivanka Trump. She seems to be very yeah. intelligent. She's but, sharp. Oh. People spreading rumors about no, 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 no. teenagers. It's not the, our business. You're missing the forest for the trees here. The point was the Daily News is so desperate now for stories about the Trump family. They're, just, they're digging the, the ridiculous stuff that's just comical. Well, it's just like the New York Post. It's about the clicks. The New we, York Daily News, the New York Post. When I used to work it's for... Um, the clicks. When I used it's to, all they want is I used the to clicks. work for Gannett years ago before the internet was big. And uh, we used to call it the New York Compost. And, uh, but the only thing that was really good, now they're coming around, but back then they had a great sports page. They had a great sports page. That's that what Phil you, Mushnick. Phil Mushnick. That's who you need to follow. If you, if you want common sense in the sports department, you keep an eye on Phil Mushnick. He'll, he still calls it as he sees it. He, I, he, I just, he tells the truth. 
I just, I just want to say this, you know, with the Democrats and what they did, and everybody knows, so let's, we won't go into details. But was it worth it? Was it really, really worth it? Was it worth it to put the whole country in turmoil, destroy your own party? Now, gosh, 40, 45%, maybe even higher of the people don't trust the elections anymore. Was it really worth turning this into at least on face value a now a banana republic? At less what it looks like a to the world. Banana Republic? It's that's what it looks like to the world. Sounds like something Harry Chapin would sing about. We're not a banana republic. We're America. We're, yeah, well, we're strong. Yeah. We're we're amazing. I this think is, we'll get through it. I mean, I mean we got the best system. Of course we'll, we're gonna get through it. We got through the last four years. We'll get through the next four. Uh, we did pretty good. Except for COVID, we were doing very well. Oh. We were doing very well. Maybe not around here, but nationwide. No, not around here. I mean, you point to one good thing that happened around here. Because of the guy in charge since January 2017. Point to one good thing that happened in Broome County because oh, of him. He, well, there was some jobs created in Broome County, sure. But we're, we're in a one-party one state. It's, uh, it's difficult in states like this. The manufacturing base have been gutted by the same deals that these idiots make that he uh, is against. You can't deny the fact that the manufacturing base went, went downhill because of the bad trade deals. You can't say that didn't happen that way. It did, and that wasn't his fault. You know, he's got a lot of faults, personality faults, huge faults in his personality and other things. You don't need to, you can pick on those. You don't need to make up stuff. I mean, there's enough of him to criticize without conjecture. I mean, how did he help the people in Broome County? He's the president of the United States. He's not Broome County executive. Yeah, I just don't see anything that he did, a single thing specifically, right, this, that made a difference in Broome County. That's what no, I want to know. No, it's just the states that had uh, what I'll call proper gov- governance, uh, governors, their legislators. I mean, look at the look at Tennessee, North Carolina, and the South. They're booming. Uh, parts in Texas are all booming. They're all the 11.1 million jobs. They went somewhere. They went somewhere, maybe not much in the Northeast, New York City was booming before COVID. It really was. Financially, it was booming. So, you know, you can't say, uh, you can't solve everybody's problems. You do the best you can. I just wanted some new businesses at the Charles Street Business Park. I'll I'll tell you how bad it is. I mean, it's tough. There have been zero new businesses. The last four years, there hasn't been a single business created at the Charles Street business park. The only business there, they moved from Front Street over uh, over to the existing building because Emerson left after eight years. I'll tell you the truth. I did a lot of, you know, a lot of thinking about when you're in high school and like that, people you grew up with. I I'll, I'll probably would be a good guess between 80 and 85% of the people I went to high school with are out of the area. I would say the same about family members, cousins. Both of my kids live out of state. I mean, it's it was the trend for a long time, and the people that say to try to tough it out, and uh, and here we are, and uh, it's it's a cycle that's been going on for fifty years. So to say President Trump didn't help us is a little disingenuous. Oh, I don't think it's disingenuous. I'm just asking. You, you, you can't. All, help. all I'm asking is to point out what what one thing that he did. You with the rules and regulations created a single business in Broome County in 2017. With point the, to a single one. With the overbearing taxes, property taxes and everything else, there's not much you can do to help. In fact, I'm after this talking to you, I got to run down the post office with my second installment of my school taxes, which I got to pay on time even though they're not in school. I mean, unbelievable the property taxes here. He can't fix that. In fact, when he tried to put a cap on the property tax deduction, everybody screamed. I'm like, you know, Come on, you, you can't, you can't, you can't uh, make everybody happy. It's just speaking with John Cordisco, former member of Binghamton City Council. So I take it oh. that you're going to throw your hat into the ring next year and run for mayor. Is that is that true? Uh, no. That's... Well, then who's who's going to be the Republican candidate? Oh, I'm not at liberty to say who's who's thinking about it. I can give you my guess on the Democrat side. Who? Uh, my guess, well, probably about 25% Angela Riley and about 75% Joe Burns. Well, I think Angela Riley said she wouldn't on this program. I asked her about it. I don't, uh, well, I don't know if, about if Joe, Joe Burns. If, Joe Burns, that would make sense because we've had 
Burns and City Hall for for decades. Yeah, in fact, I said the, fam- the family legacy. I was just I, in his district. I was over in Joe Burns' district just two hours ago on the south side. I, Everything I, is I coming up dad. rose. I knew his dad. In fact, I sat next to his dad for three hours waiting for Bill Clinton at the Fountains Pavilion. We had a long chat. He had a lot of good stories. Yeah. And that's I went, the thing. I it's, went to his wife. It's a great family that's long been involved in, in government and politics. I, I'm not going to, you know. Tell me, who, who would you support for the Republicans then? I'm not at liberty to say who's thinking about it. No, not who's thinking about it. You're... You're an independent man, a Republican, former Democrat, but now a Republican. Right. So who do you think would have the best chance to keep the Republicans in control on the fourth floor? Well, I'd have to take it from the list of people who think that are doing it. You're talking about just in general? Yeah, throw out a name. Rich You're David. not under oath. Rich David. I think he'd run again, but he can't. He can't. That's my point. I know. But Jared. Jared Cramp. If that's the point you asked a question like that. There is no answer because whoever would I would say is not going to run. So you never know if they're listening listening well, to the program. We only got a this couple, is how it all gets started. We only got a couple minutes left. I want to mention I'm a chess player, as you know, and a chess tournament organizer. And I watched the Queen's Gambit on Netflix. My God, my God, how good is that? And I usually don't hear me praise. Netflix or any of those liberal companies that much. This was incredibly well done and incredibly well made. In fact, I did a review on it on my YouTube podcast channel, and I've never done a review on anything before. And I'll tell you, it was. I read the book five or six times. It was written in the early 80s. It's an amazing story. It's incredibly well produced. It takes place in the 60s in the United States and Kentucky. It's amazing. Anybody that gets a chance to see it, I advise it highly, highly, highly. It's a, I never thought, see, I'm a chess guy. When you see, like, chess in movies and TV shows, it's always, like, garbage. They don't really play. The boards are always set up wrong. Whoever did this did a proper job. And they're real games. If you go online on YouTube and punch in, like, Harmon is the girl's name and the person she played, they're really good games. I mean, they're real games. It is incredibly well made and riveting stuff, riveting stuff. I have never, you never heard me praise a show before on the air. And I'll That's t- on the Netflix channel. Oh, yeah, and I don't promote Netflix as a rule, but I'll tell you, they hit, they hit it out of the park with this one. I'll give them that. If they stop doing this PC nonsense on shows, they end up doing incredibly well. Maybe they ought to take note. It's, I heard uh, they're going to charge more, though. That, yeah, I got that the... That shows you that they're real Americans because they well, they want to keep charging more every time. I got I got the notice. Yeah, they're going to raise it up. I got the notice. <laughs> But, they're uh, clever that way. Yeah, well, but, but I appreciate it again. Just to clarify, you will not run for mayor. Yeah. No. All right. Just want to be sure. Okay. Keep in touch because I want you back on the program soon. Yeah, I'll give you a call. We'll talk. All right. Keep me posted. All right, Bob. Thanks.